We're continuing our studies in Chapter 21 on transcription and RNA, and in this lesson we'll be looking at transcription regulation. For those eukaryotic promoters that contain tidal boxes, the first transcription factor to bind is tidal binding protein, or TBP. Remember, not all eukaryotic promoters have a tata box, but those that do initiate transcription by the binding of this protein. We have a figure from your book at the top of the screen, the tata binding protein and ribbon diagram in green, and it's binding to the tata box of DNA, which is depicted in purple. The orange spheres represent phenylalanine residues that are present on tata binding protein and they wedge between the T's and the A's within that Tata box. Remember phenylalanine has a very hydrophobic side chain and that associates very well with those rather hydrophobic bases. So the binding of TBP to the Tata box may help other factors bind as well as RNA polymerase and that's how it initiates transcription. The assembly of the transcription factors produces what's referred to as the open structure of the transcription bubble, and that's illustrated at the lower part of the screen here. Here is RNA polymerase. It's bound to the DNA. We've separated the two strands of DNA in purple. One of those we're going to read is the template strand and synthesize the complement in RNA in red. And so we have a small portion here that represents a hybrid helix of DNA and RNA. You'll notice also that the footprint of RNA polymerase is large enough that it completely covers that region of single-stranded DNA. And for that reason, we don't need those single-strand binding proteins as we did in DNA synthesis. Here we have a surface model of transcription factors and RNA polymerase bound to a promoter element. The RNA polymerase is in gray, the Tata box binding protein is in green, TF2H is in burnt orange, TF2F in blue, the N terminus of TF2B is in yellow, and the C terminus is in purple. The DNA has been colored by electrostatic potential with the more negative regions highlighted in red, this would be the phosphodiester backbone, and the more positive regions in blue, that would be the basis. As you can see, a very complex structure that forms at that promoter. We find that even in bacterial systems, there are other elements to regulate transcription. We'll look at one example of that in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're looking specifically at eukaryotic promoter elements. In this figure from your book at the top, we have the promoter here highlighted in red. We have the general transcription factors in orange, RNA polymerase in green, so they're binding to that promoter element. One of the regulatory elements that might be present in the DNA is referred to as an enhancer. That is within the DNA element itself. It can range from 50 to 1,500 base pairs in length, and it may be as much as 120,000 base pairs upstream or downstream of the promoter. The proteins that bind to these enhancer elements are called activators because they elevate the level of transcription. Being so far removed from the promoter and the place for transcription initiation, they can only have an impact as that DNA loops over, and that's depicted at the lower portion of our illustration here. There is another complex involved in this. It's referred to as the mediator protein complex. It's actually a complex of multiple subunits. As you can see, it's acting as kind of a protein glue. It connects the general transcription factors in RNA polymerase to those activators. And so we can see the looping of the DNA, and this will actually elevate transcription. Now, although there is quite a distance many times between these enhancer elements and the promoters, remember that distance is slightly shortened by the fact that the DNA is wrapped around nucleosomes. Just as we have ways to elevate transcription, we can also suppress or repress transcription. And the DNA elements are referred to as silencer and the proteins that recognize them as repressors. These also might be connected to the transcription machinery via the mediator, only in that case their 
down-regulating transcription so that we get a lower level of transcription. The mediator complex may contain up to 60 proteins and we can combine these proteins in different ways to produce different results so that they may recognize different activators and or repressors. Remember the mediator is not a DNA binding complex it's a protein binding complex. RNA polymerase, the general transcription factors, repressors and activators are all DNA binding proteins. They bind to certain sequences within the DNA, but mediator binds to protein. The variability of gene expression by using these other regulatory elements can elevate transcription quite a bit. In a prokaryotic system, there may be as much as a thousandfold variation between the most and least expressed based on the regulatory elements present in those systems. In eukaryotic systems, however, it may vary as much as a billionfold, considerable variation. This is why we have those multiple, not only regulatory elements, but even the general elements within the promoter so that we can have this wonderful variety in terms of the difference of which genes are expressed as well as the level to which they are expressed. Here we have a model of the yeast mediator bound to RNA polymerase. The promoter DNA is in blue and green. The RNA polymerase is the more dense surface model in the darker yellow and mediator is in the brighter yellow. What about those DNA binding proteins? Well, there's some very common motifs or domain structures within those proteins. And your book will mention several. We're just going to focus on one, which is probably the most common, the helix turned helix motif. 20 amino acids are present in two short alpha helices, and they're separated by a beta turn. And that's illustrated here. So our helix turned helix is highlighted in our green circle here, the two alpha helices, one in red and one in orange, and one small turn connecting them. One of these, the one highlighted in red, is the recognition helix. This is the por a very small portion of the protein that actually recognizes the sequence of DNA, and of course it binds to the major group. Now what's not illustrated here is there are other portions to this DNA binding protein not illustrated. This is a very common theme in bacterial systems. In our next video lesson, we're going to look at the structure of the LAC operon as an example of a prokaryotic system and see how it's regulated.